Sustainable development has become the popularized expression for Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the 1992 United Nations Rio Declaration on the Environment and Development. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. Agenda 21 defines itself as the comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations systems. It also elevates nature above man. And it contains something called the precautionary principle, where basically you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Sustainable development is the philosophy designed to bring human beings across the globe under the full control of a narrow human elite. It's a 40 chapter document to basically control the world. It's based entirely on socialist control mechanisms. Sustainable developers have designed a global movement coordinated through a global to local action plan to create world government in accordance with certain objectives. These objectives include an end to national sovereignty, the abolition of private property, the restructure of the family unit, and increasing limitations and restrictions on mobility and individual opportunity. The green goal includes the listings of what's not sustainable. A couple of the examples include private property. 728 lists fossil fuels. Golf courses and ski lodges are not. Consumerism. Irrigation is not sustainable. Paved roads. Commercial agriculture. Herbicides, pesticides. Elsewhere, it lists farmlands, pastures, grazing of livestock. And the family unit. The focus of sustainable development is the abolition of private property, societal undermining of the family, and abandonment of the constitutional protection of unalienable rights as described in the Declaration of Independence. You see, I sat on the Santa Cruz Agenda 21 committees. Now, this was a lot of crazy ideas. This was back in the mid-90s. Crazy ideas, I heard. Mother Earth's surface wasn't to be scratched. Human beings were to be concentrated into human settlement zones. Educational systems were to focus on the environment as the central organizing principle. All aspects of life were, were covered. Well, I went to these committees at the request of some people who told me that I needed to understand what was going on, and I came back and I said, this is craziness. This is so silly. It has no chance of having any effect on our society. Well, I was wrong. The United States government's support for sustainable development, Agenda 21, is very clear. In 1992, while the Rio conference was going on, George Bush, then president, was there where he executed the Agenda 21 protocols on behalf of the United States and brought it back to Washington, D.C. Within a year, Bill Clinton, by executive order, no congressional review, established the President's Council for Sustainable Development. In Santa Cruz, we've got a two-lane freeway system. We need four but what we're getting is hundreds of millions of dollars of federal money to take a dilapidated rail line that Southern Pacific wants to put in the hands of somebody else so that a commuter line can be built along the railroad track. That'll be followed by 14-story buildings where people will live and stack them and pack them units, where developers or so-called sustainable developers will build these high-rises with federal dollars. In fact, Santa Cruz has received a $300 million federal grant to build the first 3,000 of these stack and pack them units. The County Board of Supervisors has said, if you are a sustainable developer, you're immune from any construction defect liability. It's a partnership between selected developers building this new world order and the government using the American taxpayer dollars in order to do it. This is a map of the Wildlands Project. To explain the map, the red are areas that are to be off limits to human beings. No resource development, 
No human activity. If you live there, you won't. The yellow areas are the areas for major control of all human activity. If you live there, you won't. The black areas, the black dots, are the smart growth zones. That's where human beings are to be stacked and packed in small living units along rail tracks. The smart growth program ultimately has jobs assigned and children cared for by the state. The question was, has been asked many times how uh, the people who are perpetrating these things expect to do this and make it last. And the answer to that is that you steal a generation of children and you indoctrinate them so that they accept these ideas and they become global citizens in the coming global village. UNESCO came out and declared 2005 to 2015 the decade of education for sustainable development. But they go on to say that it will encompass the 40 chapters of Agenda 21. That is your federal national curriculum. The entire purpose of second grade social studies is to transfer loyalty from the family to the government and teach them about sustainable economic consumption. Students construct their own understandings of reality and realize that objective reality is not knowable. So why bother? The truth is the truth which keep men free is being suppressed in order to prop up the attitude training agenda. And it moves on. This is our new uh, math called Connected Mathematics. Standard 3 tells us that students learn that mathematics is man-made, that it is arbitrary and good solutions are arrived at by consensus. Most of us assume 2 plus 2 is always going to equal 4. You're wrong. We might reach a new consensus. Uh, how well does it work? Well, they tell you in the teacher's guide in the back, it tells us that because the curriculum doesn't emphasize arithmetic computations done by hand, some students may not do as well on tests assessing computational skills. We believe such a trade-off in the favor of CMP is very much to the student's advantage in the world of work. Our children are mathematically illiterate on purpose. How do I know on purpose? Why isn't this just a basic bad idea? Because the Sustainable Development Plan tells us so. Generally, more highly educated people who have higher incomes consume more resources than poorly educated people who tend to have lower incomes. In this case, more education increases the threat to sustainability. Charlotte Iserby, I owe you an apology. I did not believe for the longest time it was a deliberate dumbing down. I thought the dumbing down was a natural consequence of a bad idea. Folks, it's deliberate. It's deliberate. The sustainable globalist goal is the orchestration of a planned fall of American principles, values, and lifestyles. The effect on the average American will be devastating. With modernizing technology, the ordinary person will live without independence, privacy, or substantive rights. Another press conference that I attended was uh, the ICLE group, the International Committee for Local Environmental Initiatives that helps in the implementation of Agenda 21 in all of our local communities. And um, one of the speakers was a Harvey Reuven, who happens to be the vice chair of ICLE. And I asked him about the correlative rights that Americans derive from the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And that, of course, is your individual liberties, your private property, your you know, freedom of speech. I asked about it clashing with Agenda 21. And you know what his response was? Individual rights must take a back seat to the collective. Hello, everybody. I'm Reverend Dr. Red. This video is going to be on Agenda 21, the overview of Agenda 21, and primarily how it fits into uh, Bible prophecy. <clears throat> now, uh, let me read a little bit from my notes, and then I'm going to cover a little bit of 
want to remember off the top of my head. Got my nose in front of my face. And then I'll tell you where you can go to find further information. And there's one one is a very serious um, matter. And there's one one is a very, very, very serious threat to the American way of life and all of humanity. All right. And this may sound crazy for some of you, but this is factual, it is real, it is happening right now as we speak. And this video here, along with the article that I wrote and the podcast that I did, is to serve as a warning to all of you out there to let you know what is happening and what's going to happen unless we do what we can to stop it. And we'll also briefly go into in this video how we can stop it from, from happening. Or at least slow them down. <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of you may already know in the 21 as the Earth Summit or as. UNEP, U-N-E-P. Now, the goal of N21 is to minimize the global population by between 85 and 90 percent. You did hear me correctly. Now, right now we have a population of, of 7 billion people on this planet. Picture, picture 85 percent to 90 percent of that just taken away. Just like that, they're gone. You're going to have, what, a little over a billion people? Now, if you picture, you, you belong to the uh, elite, which is approximately 400 people left on my check. There might be a bit more now, maybe a little bit less. Um, it would not be easier for you to control for the ruling 400 people to control 1 billion people as opposed to 7 billion people. Um, I'm going to, the, the, the point I'm doing this is to make and the point I'm doing this is to make it easier to control everybody. Uh, They're going to deem land uninhabitable. Recently, the county that I live in was deemed uninhabitable for humans. Even though humans have been here for the past 200 years, as uh, at least as far back as I can find history on the on this particular area of the state, but I'm sure it, it, you know the Native Americans or use this land. However, I also found some reassuring news. I still need to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I still need to see exactly how correct it is and, you know, make sure it stays that way if it is true. But I just found out that the state of Florida has been removed from Agenda 21. The United Nations Act of Agenda 21 in the state of Florida has been repealed. So if you live in the state of Florida, and then the 21, as of this video being recorded, is repealed. And I will provide uh, more information on that on the website, so uh, spiritualmessiahministries.org. But that does not mean that people who live in Florida, that you can sit back and just relax. Right? I live in Florida myself, and I'm not just sitting back relaxing. I'm making this video because it still is a very important factor in my life, not just as a Floridian, or as an American, or as a Christian, as, as a human. As, uh, you know, as man, it isn't, isn't important to me. Now, that's because you live in Florida, and let's say the app is actually up, uh, repealed. The information I found out that is true. Uh, that's not to say that we're in the clear just yet, because if the rest of the 
States. He's still on Africa in the 21. Minnesota's going to bombard, and Florida is still going to be smacked with it. Don't think we're not going to feel the effects of it if the rest of the country goes into it. So, even though it won't, might not be happening directly here with us at the same exact time as it's happening in the rest of the country, it is still a factor in our life. We are going to still feel the effects of it. And through feeling the effects, people might fall into it, and it will be allowed to once again happen here in Florida. Only this time, instead of it being a simple act that on a certain date it will be implemented, at that point in time it will be forcibly implemented instead of just speaking about it and debating about it and all of the nonsense. So it is still a very important factor if you live in Florida, get the word out there, educate yourself about Agenda 21 and get the word out there about Agenda 21 to all of your friends, your family, everybody you come in contact with and try to make sure it stays out of Florida and try to push it out of the other states, out of America and then America can help the other nations get out of the other nations. We do not want an M21 in this country. It is a threat. You don't fall for their act of, of trying to uh, hide under the guise of uh, the, the Earth Summit or UNEP or you know, any of the other names that they have to cover up and make it look like you know, they're helping mankind and they're helping the planet because they're not. It's going to destroy the planet. It's going to destroy mankind. It's going to destroy the animal kingdom. They're doing this so they, for, for the sole purpose of control. Um, and if you don't believe me, by the time this video ends, I will have future videos talking about it. This is going to be a series of videos, not necessarily this following this video directly, but I will have other videos on number 21. Just like if you watched my last video on Islam in the Bible, that was a video part of a series on Islam. As you can see by now watching this video, it's not video after video after video after video. There's too much important information that I got for space with. So I'm going to keep on covering each and every topic as best as I can, as often as I can to get the videos out there. But I can't stay strictly on one topic. My purpose is to get the truth out to you people. And there's plenty of sheeple out there that are still sleeping. My job is to wake them up. Those of you that are awake to this, my job is to get further information into your hands and to help you get into even more information that I, may, that I may not have come across yet. So in turn, you can take that information and spread it and hopefully get it back to me so I can broadcast it out to my viewers, listeners of my podcast, and readers of the articles on the website. You know, this is a joint effort. We all, we all need to work together. It's the only way we are going to stop this. Um, now, once they, they, they deem these lands uninhabitable, what they're going to do is they're either going to do, do one of two things. Okay? They're either going to take any, anybody that's in that area that's uninhabitable and just kill them, smoke them out, or they're going to be literally taken out of their homes and put into FEMA camps or concentration camps. Remember the concentration camps from Nazi Germany? Well, they're going to be here. As a matter of fact, if you Google it and look it up, I have already heard the information from a few contacts of mine that there are FEMA camps um, or concentration camps, however you want to look at that, ran by FEMA, that are already operational in different parts of America where you're either in the, middle of the, in the middle of the desert where you can just look on and look on as far as the eye can see and you can't see anything and somewhere in the middle of that is this concentration camp and if you try going in the direction of the camp you're going to be passing signs warning you if you go any further you're going to get shot at if you try going any further guess what's going to happen you're going to be met by military vehicles that seemingly come out of nowhere you're going to be heavily armed they may shoot at you in some instances, they have. I heard reports of people have been shot at. In other instances, they might just stop you in your tracks, question you why you're there, and demand that you leave and don't come back. You can leave and you can try waiting them out for them to leave their location, but at least one of those vehicles are going to stay on that spot 
expecting you to be sitting someplace watching. And they know even that, they, that you're going to be there watching for as long as you're there for watching because they're going to have eyes on you. They have cameras all over the desert. They're going to have eyes in the sky. And you'll have more eyes on you than you can possibly imagine. And there's also areas in the uh, more woody parts of, of America where you have acres and acres and acres of land that's all fenced off, lots of five fences, no trespassing signs. They warn you with that if you trespass, you're going to be shot, all this other fun stuff. But if you look, all you're going to see is trees. Well, as far as you know, that might be a preservation spot or a government protected area. Meanwhile, an acre or so in, you have this concentration camp. They are here. They are actively running now. More of them will be popping up through the implementation of Agenda 21. And again, if you don't believe me, Google it. There are sources out there before they're taken off in the Internet. Because that hasn't started now. There's plenty of videos dropping off YouTube because of the content. There's websites being shut down because of their content. I've had numerous of my websites shut down because of the content on my website, getting information such as this out there. So please, share this video, get the information out there. Before the content is deleted off of these other websites, Google it, look it up, see the information for yourself. Don't take my word for it, see the information for yourself. And once they have all these people out of these lands that were deemed uninhabitable, they're now going to start rebuilding that land up with a far station and a lot of the good stuff. And what they're going to be doing is literally forming island cities. <coughs> Where they're going to have the bottom layer of a city, like kind of like New York City or Los Angeles or what have you. And then above the highest point, they're going to build another platform with a ginormously thick stem going up to support it. And there's going to be another city on top of that. And uh, as far as what I came across, it's only supposed to be roughly uh, three layers high. So you have enough three layers of the city. <coughs> and only, it will only be the government officials that are allowed, that we will be allowed to travel between, between these island cities. That is it. You are their slaves. You are supposed to be in within these cities that are self-sufficient, doing as, you, uh, as the slave masters ask of you. People like myself probably won't make, won't make it that far if that's ever implemented. Um, and also going to be what they've already started doing. We all know how Michelle Obama has been out there uh, promoting, you know, to eat healthier foods. Forcing was it a apple fries or something like that with the, with the McDonald's kids meals nowadays. Meanwhile, she's still eating all the French fries she wants. She's eating all the food she wants. But as far as us, the average American citizen, they want us eating healthier foods. And the reason for this, the reason for these healthier lifestyles that they're pushing on us and they're throwing down our throats, it isn't to make us healthier to benefit for for us to benefit. It's for their benefit. And the healthier lifestyle that we live now, the healthier it will be when this agenda gets implemented. And by the time we're done weeding out, weeding everybody out, and killing off whoever they're going to kill, and bringing to these islands to these whoever is going to be their, you know, uh, slave workers. Thanks to your healthier lifestyle you've been living in the meantime, you are now a stronger slave. So you can do. Stay up awake mentally and physically longer so you can do more work throughout the day. And then when they get done with you, you they just let you die off. It's that simple. Uh, any and all elderly uh, physically or mentally ill, smokers, etc., are going to be killed. 
They're going to kill off the elderly because they're too old to work. And they're of no use to, to the elite. And they're going to kill off the physically disabled or the mentally disabled because they're of no use to the elite. They, they, won't, they won't be able to work. Remember, they're doing this, they're promoting it like it's this big, great thing for us. When all it actually is, is we're going to be their slaves at their demand. When they don't need us, they're going to kill us. The mentally ill that have no capacity to work for a long amount of time are going to be killed off. The physically disabled that just can't work for whatever reason are going to be killed. They're of no, they're of no use. Anybody who's currently on drugs or uh, cigarette smokers, pipe smokers, or any kind of tobacco, uh, if you're an alcoholic, or not, you're going to be killed off. Why? Because it doesn't matter how healthy your body appears, doesn't matter how um, healthy the food is you're consuming, fact of the matter is you're, too, you're sick. If you're an alcoholic, you've got the bad liver and kidneys. If you're a tobacco user, you've got the bad lungs. You, you're not going to be able to, to, to work as efficiently as those who don't drink, don't smoke, are mentally and physically stable, and have lived a nice, healthy lifestyle. There's no use to people like us. They're going to kill us. Um... And then, and then we have the, the academic system. It's no longer education, it's indoctrination of global propaganda brainwashing our children. If you read the history books, I want all of you that are watching this video right now, that are in, between your 40s and your 60s, if you're younger than that, then show it to your parents or grandparents. Or at least ask them this question. Think about what you what you saw in your books, in your history books. What did you read about? America was started by Christians. When we came here, we had the whole the American thing going on, but they were Protestant-based Christians. Then somewhere along the lines, the Mormons came into the picture, and they had a problem with the main, with the other Christians of the nation, and they took the land over in Utah, out in Utah. And as history will show us, Muslims did not come to America at all until the 1900s, okay? We also learn in the history books that Christopher Columbus was the one that discovered America, even though, you know, obviously there was, that's up for debate. But instead, that Christopher Columbus founded America. Some people will go as far as saying before Christopher Columbus, there was you know, the, the Irishmen that came from Ireland, Scotland, you know, about the, the Gaelic region. I came here, landed, in, I believe it was in Florida, on 40 trips, of uh, trips, 40 ships. After staying about a year, 20 of those ships went back to, to the Isle of the Gale. The other 20 of those ships stayed here and became what we know to be the Native Americans, which naturally puts them here well before Christopher Columbus did. But here again, a Muslim has not landed on this continent in America until the 1900s. If you open up your child's history book, what are you going to find? What are you going to see in that book? You're going to see that it states that a Muslim, not Christopher Columbus, but a Muslim, founded America. You're also going to see that Muslims helped liberate America from the British. How can they help? How can they help do something when they weren't even here? Furthermore, you're going to see how Christians and Muslims, up until the 1990s, early 2000s, got along peacefully. Meanwhile, since the, the religion of Islam was created by Muhammad, there's been nothing but unrest between the, the between Islam and Christianity and Judaism. 
not on the Christians and the Jews doing it, but on the, on the Muslims doing it to us. They beheaded Christians and Jews in the Mid Middle Eastern region that would not convert to Islam. And they're still doing so to this day. And now they're beginning doing that in, in here in America. You don't believe me? There's over 30 establishments in America that are no gold zones. The entire cities. But this video is not supposed to be about Islam. It's going to be about that topic. Bottom line is, today's history books isn't factual history. If you compare it to the history books of your your history books when you were in school, you are not going to see even those even those of you that are my age. All of you watching this that you're in your mid twenties, early thirties, remember what you were taught in history class or social studies when you were younger, up to when you, up to history class when you when you, you got uh, into the high school era. What were we taught about the Muslims? What were we taught about the founding of America? What were we taught about the Revolutionary War? What were we taught about American history? Now I want you to look at these the history books of these younger of the younger generation that are in school now. K through twelve, right now. Read the history books. It does not match. It is false history. They are indoctrinating your children and in my case my little brothers and sisters that are still in school. I believe my youngest sister right now is in tenth grade. 10th grade? 11th grade. My youngest sister is in 11th grade right now. And they're being indoctrinated with this nonsense. And they're being told, they're being falsely told to believe that Islam is a peaceful religion. that Christians are evil, and that Jews are evil, that we are a secular nation, that we are a democracy. Now, our U.S. Constitution, okay, everybody knows is, is, that is sprinkled all throughout it with mentions of the Creator, God, and in other, in other terms, talking about God. And Christian values and morals. The Supreme Court building is riddled with Christian morals and the Ten Commandments. We were built on Christian morals. We were born a Christian nation. But that's not what's being taught in schools nowadays. It's a factory. It's a factory for the perfect little slave. <clears throat> and we have the fact that there's doctors out there that are dying, diagnosing children with, with disorders that, that don't even exist. Like ADHD, for example, an antidepressive hyper disorder. Hyper whatever it's pronounced. And that disorder did not exist until a decade or two ago. I mean, there were mentions about it back in the 50s, but it didn't become an actual diagnosis, an actual on-the-books disorder until a decade or two ago. That was done for the sole purpose of marketing these new, the, these new drugs they had out, and they, did, didn't, and they had nothing to attack them to, to force feed them onto our youth. Um, post-traumatic stress syndrome. Everybody's been hearing that for decades now. Another mere disorder. The whole purpose of them making up these, these fake uh, diagnoses and telling you that this disorder, that disorder, another disorder, is so that they can give you and your children these drugs. What these drugs are going to do I want you to take a Google this. I want you to Google this. There's been numerous cases found where there were people, all ages, that never before in their life have they had a suicidal thought. Never. 
they get diagnosed with, whether it be ADHD, ADD, um, bipolar disorder, you know, a anything like that. Did they not get put on this drug? About three to six months in, all of a sudden, if they have all these suicidal thoughts, the doctor says, okay, well, that's, that's a bad medication for you. I'm going to give you this. And they give them something else. Three to six months into that, all of a sudden, the kid's dead. They committed suicide. And this is somebody who, had, who never, ever had a suicidal thought before in their lives. Now they get diagnosed with a disorder that doesn't even exist. They get put on a drug to handle that disorder, and they commit suicide. And then you have other individuals that are very outspoken. They'll question authority. They might not go all the way out to the extent where an officer tells them to get out of the vehicle for whatever reason. And so they get out and start beating the, the cop up. It just might be that they might just have an attitude towards authority or whatever. They'll go ahead. Now that person is going to be diagnosed with it, with having a disorder. They're going to be given a medication for it. They start taking that medication. And now all of a sudden that person wakes up one day and they realize that, that who they were just a year ago isn't who they are now. Whereas last year, somebody got in their face, or somebody was bothering their family, or somebody were, were brought great harm to their family, they would get in that person's face. Now all of a sudden, they're cowering in the corner. That's because of the drug. The drug that you're taking is not helping you. It is turning you into zombies. That's what they want. They work, they, they, these drugs, it, it's doing one of two things to you, to you people. If you allow yourself or your children to be on these drugs, you are going to see one of two things happen. Either A, you're gonna, it's going to interact with you with your chemical makeup in your brain so bad that it's going to drive you to kill yourself. Or B, it's going to do its job and it's going to rewire the chemical makeup of your brain where now you are nothing but a zombie. You move about your life like everyday business, but the minute that big brother over there starts speaking to you through that camera, you cop back in your car and go home and lock yourself inside for the next three months because there's just a terrorist threat in that particular store you happen to be standing in, you're going to do it. Well, if you're at a coliseum, and that camera starts talking, that loudspeaker starts talking to you, and it says, it's empty out all your pockets and hand, and hand everything you own to the uniformed officers that are going to be walking through the Coliseum, you're going to do it without question. Why? Because you're a zombie. The drug rewired you. You are willingly turning over your soul, your life, and your freedoms to Big Brother. If you have been diagnosed or your child has been diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, bipolar, or anything else, don't believe it. Don't fall for that line of stuff. They're trying to control you. They're going to feed you this line of nonsense. Well, I'm the doctor, so I know everything. You don't know anything. How many years of college did you go through? What kind of degrees do you carry? Now that's what I thought. You see these, see my wall here? I see all these degrees I have. I'm the doctor, I know everything. Don't listen to them. Know your rights. Learn what's going on. Learn what's happening to you. Learn what's happening to your children. Now let me ask you this. When you were six years old, seven years old, eight years old, what were you doing? Were you sitting there in the classroom like this? Was it obeying, the, listening to every word that the teacher was saying? Or did you every now and then start tapping the pencil out of boredom or staring out the window? Or when you went home, did you not run around like crazy and play in the backyard and you fall off the spring set and bust your knee and start crying? This is, this is being a kid. Not because they want everybody to be perfect little slaves, perfect little robots. One little sign of a, a kid being a kid. All of a sudden, and they got this order. And what are you doing? You're falling for this line of stuff.
yes, they even old, well, even, even though my, I was like that when I was my kid's age, uh, kind of when my kids would be doing that, so yeah, I'm going to say my kid has ADHD, and I'm going to put him on, on, on Ritalin, and I'm going to screw his brain all up, knock it off, wake up what's happening to you. And if you, or you, if you have your kid on this stuff now, it might not be too late. Take them off the drugs. Take yourself off the drugs. Google this. Look it up. And research the facts. Save yourself. Educate yourself. Know your rights. We are being dumbed down, ladies and gentlemen. We are being dumbed down. We cannot allow this to continue happening. We have to wake up. I mean, I'm, I've been seeing over the past couple of years that more and more people have been waking up what's going on and have been slowly connecting the dots. But then they get the brilliant idea that they'll go on Facebook or these other social networks, make up a false identity and a, a false avatar, and what's the pain they're going to mother safe. Then you'll have somebody like myself who knows better than that, and they'll tell them that they're not safe. Everything you do everywhere, particularly on Facebook, runs through NSA server before it, it, it hits its end destination. They know where you're coming from. Well, they got to trace back your IP address. They know who you are. They know where you live. They know everything about you. I've seen people out here that hear this, and then all of a sudden they don't have a Facebook page anymore. Or they don't have a YouTube channel anymore, or whatever it is that they're working with. Figuring, well, now they're safe. No, you're not. All you did is endangered yourself. If you already started speaking out, you might as well just reveal your face, reveal your true identity because it's not going to help protect you. And you might as well keep on speaking up and speaking out. Because if you keep on speaking up and speaking out, that is the only thing. Especially as times get worse and things keep on fast forwarding at the rate that it's going, the only thing that is going to keep you alive is to continue speaking out. Get yourself in front of the in front of the people. The government will will not take you out if they feel there's eyes on you. So do not remove yourself from the public side. Secondly, this is an information war, and there have been numerous numerous politicians working with the elite, Hillary Clinton being one of them, that have stated that they acknowledge. No, this is an information war. And they have admitted they are losing this war. Well, we need to keep on doing what we're doing. Don't, if you're already speaking out, don't stop. Continue speaking out. Continue waking yourself up even further. Continue waking up more people. Keep on speaking out. If you're only on YouTube, go on Facebook. If you're on Facebook on, and YouTube, go on Twitter. If you're on all that, go someplace else. The more networks you're on, the more formats you're on, the more people can see, will see it, the more people you can wake up. The more people that are awake, the more people that are saying it. The more that are saying it, the more chances we can do something to beat them, and they will lose this info war. And in the end, they will lose the war altogether. And then people will once again have our country back, and mankind will have their planet back. We have been asleep for too long. Another point that I just read my notes. I need to mention. <clears throat> I might as well mention now. For all of you that have stood with me for the past 35 minutes of this video, and you now you might be thinking I'm, I'm crazy, you've never heard of this before. If you're one of the people that are taking Xanax, Valium, Ritalin, or any other drugs, Ambien, or any other drugs, Stop taking the drugs. Allow your brain to rewire itself back to how it's supposed to be. Or at least as close to normal as you can get. Because it is the drugs that is not allowing you to see what's going on around you for what it is. 
the banks of these drugs is putting is putting a mask over your face, it's putting goggles on your eyes. So instead of seeing these big black and white signs that say obey, you see it in an ad to buy that Chevrolet. When you got people being murdered in the streets, and what you see is families playing with each other. Stop taking the medication. Remove the goggles off your eyes. Remove the consoles from your ears, and start waking up what's going on around you. Nothing that's going to take place. Because all the religions of the world are going to be outlawed. The first to be outlawed is going to be Christianity, Judaism, and Buddhism. The purpose in, in, <clears throat> in outlawing Christianity, Judaism, and Buddhism on a global scale first before any other faith is because those are the three religions of light. One of the three different interpretations of truth that can and will shed light into the darkness. In the, in the three, the names change, slight details differ, but they all base around truth. Christianity and Judaism is seen as the largest threat to the 2021 and the elite. The reason for this is because in Judaism with the Old Testament, which is the Old Testament of the Christian Bible, or Christianity, which you now have the Old and the New Testament talking about the same prophecy in just different, different ways, it speaks about what's happening right now. When we are in the midst of seeing, it is happening right before our eyes, and you people are sleeping. It speaks about all this. Religions being outlawed, the massive delusions, the, the massive famine, drought, disease, the one world religion coming to a rise, which we're in the midst of seeing that happening right now, how when the beast rises, everything in our have to be made to get hit, the, the, the number of the beast on their uh, hand or their forehead. And that's happening now, ladies and gentlemen. Wake up. Everyone's going to be forced to receive a chip in their hand or in their forehead. Without the chip, no one will be able to buy, sell, lease anything. Anyone who refuses the chip, not only can they not take part in the community, they will be killed on the orders of the government. Now, all of you Christians out there, does that not sound like it's coming right out of Revelations? Place chip with Mark of the Beast. And that's taken right out of Genesis 21. It's a place chick with the mark of the beast. I'll read it to you again. Everyone will be forced to receive a chip in their hand or forehead. Without the chip, one will not be able to buy, sell, beat anything. Anyone who refuses the chip, not only can they not take part in the community, they will be killed on the orders of the government. Agenda 21 being implemented is the beginning of this one world government and a one world religion. So, uh, welcome to the new world order. It's happening. Unless, of course, you cherish your freedom and have faith in God and willing to fight in Christ's namesake against his emergence against this emerging satanic world order. And the battle speak, spoken about in prophecies is much a physical battle as it is a spiritual battle. The battle is happening now. We, as the Jews and the Christians, are Jesus Christ's soldiers. We are his warriors. 
So what are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and do nothing? Or are you going to do as you just asked and stand up, get off the couch, get out from behind the TV, to turn off the computer screen, turn off the video games, and get out there and fight? It was defeated here in Florida because the Tea Party and other organizations held conferences in different hotels and invited people and spoke to them about the 21. How it's to be implemented, what areas were implemented in first in here in the state of Florida. They put stuff together and got it on to the local senators and legislators' de uh, desks. They got it on, on the governor's desk and it had been repealed. So if you don't live in Florida, you're going to do the same thing in your state. So I want you to get up and get information, some information on on, on N21. Find out where it's going to begin in your state if it hasn't already begun. Start educating the masses in your state and get it repealed in your state. Let's defeat this. It's not, oh well, it's only me, so what can I do? And the, the person who started this in Florida was one person who they decided to, to defeat it here in Florida. And look what they, got, they accomplished. It has been repealed here in Florida. There's no more United Nations Agenda 21 here in the state of Florida. And I will, will make sure it stays that way. What are you going to do for your state? And if you're not in America, then what are you going to do for your country? Get United Nations Agenda 21 repealed. One person can do a lot. You can spread the information. As information spreads, it'll start putting, on, putting pressure on the government. That pressure will lead into a repealing. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get up and do it. And all of this kind of prophesied to happen. Now, to that extent, nothing can be done. And prophecy must be fulfilled. However, we are not to do nothing. We must fight. It is as much a physical battle, like I said, as it is a spiritual battle. And it has also been prophesied that there will be fights before the war and the wars. People who heed the warnings set forth since the beginning of time can and will escape this tyrannical rule by the globalist elite. We can defeat them. In order to do so, we must remain faithful in Jesus Christ and we must stick together. Any and all information that I receive on this topic, I'm going to get out there via podcast, article, video, tomorrow, or a combination of all three. It is your job to do the same thing. Find information and get it out there. People that you know about that are already speaking on it, and you find information that they don't have, make sure they get it. My kind of information is always on spiritualmessiahministries.org. In the contact uh, on the contact page again, that is spiritual messiah ministries dot org. On the website, you will also see an article entitled Agenda Twenty One and Bible Prophecy. I wanted you to read that article. In the top part of that page, more article. On the same page, it's really three articles. On top of that article is my article, where I pretty much just covered. And then I have another article 
in there by somebody else who will link from back to their website. And then below that, I have another article with a link to that person's website. <coughs> and below that, I have the link to the, to the podcast that I did that has additional information on the, under the 21 and that was not in the article. So please, go to spiritualmessianministries.org, pull up Agenda 21 and Bible Prophecy, read those three articles, click on the link to listen to my podcast that I did on, on Agenda 21, and look up more, any more information that you can find. If you find any information on Genesis 21 that you feel I haven't come across or didn't mention and you feel I should, I should mention it, go to my contact us page on the website, scroll down to where you see my personal phone number or my, and my personal email address, and give me a call or send me an email, or you can also email me or call me through the ministry. If you would like me, to hold an event for you and speak at your event on Agenda 21. Please let me know. I will. You send the information either through the ministry or to, to, to myself personally via email. Again, tonight is on the contact us page of spiritual messiah if you prefer to me to speak at an event that you set up, rather than me speaking, I have no problem with that. I will speak at your event. Just send me an email, let me know the details of the event, and we can get this uh, set up. <coughs> to see where this is in the Bible, I would like you all to turn to Revelation chapters 13, 16, 17, and 18. Now, I'm not going to sit here and read, you know, the, all these chapters in the entire rigidity. They are in, they are in the entire rigidity on the article. So you can read the scripture on the article if you don't want to open up your own Bible right now. Just go to the website and pull up the article and it is all right there. I'm going to give you an example of the scripture right here. I mean, it is uh, Revelation 13:12. Uh, 13, 11, and 12. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake at the dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And that's just an example of... Well, that's basically saying... <clears throat> and that's in reference to the Antichrist and the false prophet. The new political system, the global political system, and the, and the global, the one world religion. Now, uh, I, I, I don't remember which video it was that I said before, that I had in there. I think it was one of the introductory, introductory videos that I said this in, but I believe it was Saudi Arabian called for a, a multicultural thing we did in, Euro, in Europe. The feeling that if all the religions get together and learn about each other and form one religion with the similarities out of each of the religions, then they don't think we have peace. Then on top of that, more recently, the Vatican, okay, the Pope now of the Catholic Church, Roman Catholic, the Pope, stated that that's not going to work. When he wants to see, he agrees to be a one world religion, but he went a step further to suggest 
that we need one entity that's bigger and better than the United, than the, the United Nations. That will be the religious authority of the, of the planet and the political system of the planet. That's one, one political system controlling the entire planet. That's one religion controlling the entire planet. It's all in here, folks. Revelations 13, 16, 17, and 18. SpiritualMessiahMinistries.org, art, the article, Gen 21, and the, uh, and the Bible, or Gen 21 and Bible Prophecy, I think is what it's called. Now we're speculating, you know, who the Vatican, if he's, uh, if he's supposed to be the false prophet, or the false false prophet, or sure the false prophet. No other nonsense. So you know, folks, it is happening. And then twenty one has been slowly being implemented on us for a long time now. Not that full time highest. And at this point in history, the the persecution of Christians and Jews and that's all time highest. Which means within the next year, I have not been wrong yet, mark my words. If, if you don't listen to me and do your own research, and help, and help in, the, in the stop of, the, of Gen 21 being implemented globally, you will see this happen within the next year. Okay, right now we're in the end of October 2011. By, by the end of October 2012, we're going to see the one world religion be created, whether it's actually being implemented or it's in its practice stages, where they're going to announce this one world religion, and they're going to preach all its good points and blah, 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 and it's going to go hard, they're going to go hardcore into the all out slaughtering of Jews and Christians amongst other faiths. <coughs> And you are going to see the illegality of Judaism and Christianity all over the planet, including here in America. I made predictions for the past three years, and I haven't been wrong on any of them yet. I'm not trying to boast myself or anything else. I'm just bringing out the facts. I use the Bible, I use history, and I use current events. I haven't been wrong yet. Some of my predictions are up on spiritualmessiahministries.org on Bible prophecy and, and uh, predictions page. And I saw where in the Bible I got those predictions from. And the ones that already passed did happen. <coughs> So, if you don't believe me, you can go there and look at the predictions I made for earlier this year. And then bring up the news articles or news or the videos on the different news websites of the, the news broadcastings for that period of time. And you will see that granted mainstream media, they try to dumb it down and you know, try not to give it too much attention. Well, more or less, what I said was gonna happen happened. They just didn't make a big deal out of it. Especially the terrorist attacks that happened. And the few terrorist attacks that I predicted was gonna happen, and they happened. Not where I said they were gonna happen, but they happened nonetheless. And the government didn't pay too much attention to it. They tried. You know, calling it a, you know, small, um, a small occurrence can kind of had no connections to anything else. But anybody who's awake knows it is what it is. We can see through, we can see through these, their, their lies. And that's what I'm trying to help you all, you, all of you do. 
to see through the lies. I'm trying to wake you all up so you can see what's going on around you. And then there will be future, future videos on this topic. Like I said, Revelation 16, 17, 18, 19, Revelation 13, 16, 17, and 18 it explains about in the 21. What's going to happen? Some of it's already happened, some of it we're going to see happen in the near future. From, for, for the information that I have brought to you more in depth, go to spiritualmessiahministries.org. Genesis 21 and Bible Prophecy is the article. The bottom of the article, click, up, click on the link to listen to the podcast. And then Google, Agenda 21. And take a look at what Agenda 21 is. And then start putting values together in your area. Set events, educate people in your area, and get Agenda 21 repealed in your area. Florida managed to put enough pressure on, on them to get out of Florida. Now it's your job, if you're, at, if you're not living in Florida, it is your job to, put, to do that same thing in your state. Get speaking events going, educate the people, and put that pressure on your, on your state government to repeal the Agenda 21 in, the, in, in your state. If you're in Florida, it is your job to make sure that pressure stays on the government to make sure Agenda 21 stays out of Florida. And here again, if you want to set up a speaking event to get Agenda 21 out there to, to, to the people in your area, but you don't want to speak yourself, you, I do do speaking events on numerous different topics, including Agenda 21. Um, you can email me either through the ministry or personally. And the information is at spiritualmessiahministries.org on the contact page. Shoot me an email um, and we'll get this event set up. And we'll get these people educated on Agenda 21. And we'll get the pressure on you, on your governments, to get Zone 21 repealed and out of your area. And the pressure to be held on them to make sure they don't bring it back. We can't stop this. The only way to stop it is to keep the information going. Look it up, educate yourself, and then educate others. And please, share my video, email my video, embed the video on your blog site or your website, copy my video, and then post it, uh, publish it to your own YouTube channel, whatever you want to do. Just get this video out there, get my article out there, get the podcast out there, and then as in, any other information you find, get out there. And if you feel that it might be some information that I can use that I might not might not have gotten to yet, please email it to me so I can review it. It is the only way we are going to defeat them. It is an information war. If we can keep the information spreading, farther and faster and they can stop it. We will beat them. That's the basic overview from Agenda 21. and the mission
and that you have to stop it from the street you sold your side and to accept it. And like I said, if you don't want to speak yourself, I do do speaking events on numerous different topics. This is just one of them. This information needs to get out there. Don't let it stop here. Keep on spreading it. We must win this battle. If you lose this battle, we lose the last little bit of freedoms we have. When we win this battle, we will see ultimate freedom and ultimate peace worldwide like we've never seen before. So right here in the Bible. Please give this information spreading. Thank you for watching. And God bless.